एवरी वन वेलकम टू चलचित्र टॉक्स मेरा नाम बाणी है एंड दिस इज एन अदर ऑफ आर गेस्ट एपिसोड अ फ्यू मंथ्स अगो आई हेड एक्चुअली रिकमेंडेड टू यू थ्री पॉडकास्ट दैट आई वॉज लिसनिंग टू एट दैट टाइम एंड वन इन पर्टिक्यूलर थ्री सिक्सटी फाइव स्टोरीज दैट आई वॉन्ट टू टेल यू बिफोर वी बोथ टाई बाई कावे जहेदी गॉट सो मच लव एंड अप्रिसिएशन वी रीच आउट टू द क्रिएटर ऑफ दिस पॉडकास्ट एंड ही अग्रीड टू कम ऑन द चैनल एंड वेब एव एन आई सेट डाउन विद हिम टू सम रिकमेंडेशन एंड हैड अ ब्यूटिफुल कॉन्वर्सेशन विद हिम So, without wasting your time, let's just jump right in. Hi, sir. How are you? Good. Thank you. How are you? I'm fine as well. Um, so, Vibhav is also here, and both Hi, of sir. us run Chalchitra Talks. So, uh, I'll just jump right into the questions. So, how did you come up with a title like this? Three sixty-five stories that I want to tell you before we both we both die. Um, it took a while. I mean, I I wanted something with three sixty-five stories in the title. Uh, and there were like you know hundred titles that we went back and forth between, and uh, there were titles I liked but uh, Leon the producer didn't like, or that he liked but I didn't like. And then one day I I suggested this one and he liked it too, and we just said okay, we got one. So do you already have all the three sixty five stories penned down with you, or do you just wing it no. as you go along? <laughs> he contacted me this last summer, I think in June, and asked if I wanted to do some more audio work. I had done kind of a series called. Awkward celebrity encounters, and he had heard that and he liked it. And I said, "Yeah, I would love to do more." And he said, "Let's let's meet and talk." So we talked about a few different ideas, and then I started. He liked this idea, so I started going to his apartment. It was already during COVID, so he was. Uh, we were doing it in his closet. He has a little setup in his closet with a you know a mic and a sound barrier thing. Um, so I think I recorded like twenty the first day, and then I went like maybe every. Two weeks for a couple hours, and I would do about twenty each time. And then, you know, by the time we got, we were hoping to do it them all before January first, but we didn't succeed. So right now we have two hundred and sixty. So we have a hundred more we have to record um, before the year's up. So, what is the process of scripting the podcast? Do you actually write down the stories, or do you just no. perform it there? No, I don't write them down. I just write down the idea for the story to tell. You know, like it's a true, true story. So I just like tell the story about whatever, and then I just tell it. I don't write them. And sometimes, you know, like I think, oh, I should have said this thing I forgot to mention. And sometimes I'll do them again, but uh, often they're worse if I do them again. So there's maybe been like five or six that were redos, but most of them is just the first time. Are there any stories that you are mindful that I am not going to talk about this particular thing? Um, I mean, some stories are more embarrassing than others, I guess. I mean, I have a high threshold for embarrassment, um, but yeah, sure. There's certain things that feel like they're too personal or too um, mm-hmm. offensive, or somebody would be too upset by it or something. Um, but you know, generally, I try to tell whatever stories I think are interesting. And sir, do you have a story already in mind for the episode that will air on 31st December of this year? I'm not sure, but I, I tell the story about um, how I met Leon and how the podcast came to be. So maybe that'll be the last one. And what is the first thing that you know needs to be done once you come up with the idea of a podcast? What did you do when you came up with the idea of podcast? When Neon approached you? Well, he's made lots of podcasts before. Do you know his stuff? Not really, sir. Oh no, he's really he's a well-known podcaster. <laughs> he okay. um he did a a really great podcast called Slow Burn. Okay. And it's kind of about um recent American political history. So he had a whole season about the Watergate scandal, and then he had a whole season about the Monica Lewinsky scandal. I don't know if you know these things at all. They're American politics, and then he had a whole season on um, the vote recount in 2000. Ooh. They were really good, and I didn't know who he was. I just really loved the podcast. I'd heard about them, and I was really impressed. So when he reached out to me, I didn't realize who he was at first, but then I looked him up, and I was, oh, that's the guy who does Slow Burn. So I was, you know, like uh, excited to meet him. Uh, and work with him and so basically he's been in charge of the whole you know all the producing and all the technical stuff i i really just show up and tell the stories and then i did them a little bit i was going to ask you if you've heard of joe rogan and i was going to ask you your opinion of him because he seems to be pretty famous in india here yeah you know uh, he is famous i've listened to maybe two or three episodes uh, not very many and uh, i didn't love them i found him a little bit um self-absorbed i guess um and the ones i listen to 
but also I was impressed by his kind of frankness or something. I listened to a WTF with Mark Marin. Do you know that podcast? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that a little better than the Joe Rogan podcast that I heard. But yeah, I don't know Joe Rogan very well. I know he's really big. Are there any long format po- podcasts apart from uh, the Mark Marin one, like you mentioned, uh, that you would like to recommend to our audience? There's a French podcast I really like. It's called, it's in French, but it's called Une Vie, Une Oeuvre. You know, it means a, a life, an, an oeuvre, an opus. Uh, and it just takes a different, like, uh, important writer or musician or filmmaker and just does a one hour uh, episode about their life and their work. And it's, it's really good. Um, I, I think that's my favorite podcast I listen to. I have a friend who made this incredible podcast. Um, it's called Appearances. It's like a six part or an eight part series. It's hard to describe it because it's so strange and innovative, but it's basically sort of a hybrid of fiction and nonfiction. And it's the story of, she's uh, Iranian American about her family. And there's a character that's her, but it's not her. And then the character talks to her, the author, and it kind of like really moves in lots of interesting places. Uh, That's a fantastic podcast. And then, I have another friend whose podcast I really like. It's called uh, Constellation Prize. Her name's Bianca Gaver. And uh, she just has a really beautiful touch. She did this incredible podcast um, where she got American children to ask her questions, to ask Syrian children in a refugee camp in Syria. It was just really beautiful. Just uh, having these kids with these kind of kid notions of things, ask questions of these other kids in this very different kind of reality. Um, so I recommend those highly. The thing of podcast is on average, every episode is under five minutes. Uh, do you also think uh, you would want to someday try maybe a long format ap- episode like that goes on for an hour or two? As a podcast? <laughs> yes. <laughs> As a story? An yeah. hour long story? Yeah. Um, I don't think so. That's a, long, that's a long time. You know, I have a show, a TV show or whatever, a web show. Have you seen it? It's called The Show About the Show. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yes. So that that's like a more a long form uh, thing. But, you know, that I spent, uh, you know, years <laughs> doing that. But sir, like the, uh, if we do a long format podcast, like in the interview format, like something like uh-huh. Joe Rogan. So do you think you would be interested in something like that where you're talking to someone else? Yeah. You know, I have a series I did. It's called uh, Getting Stoned with Kaveh. Yeah. 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 And yes, so, yeah. you know, we smoke pot or I smoke pot. And then we sort of have a, a different kind of conversation than we would otherwise. And uh, that seems like it's very podcastable. But yeah, as long as I could either be like really, really honest or about something or on drugs, uh, I, would, I, would, I would be happy to do that. Yeah. So have you been to India? No, I would love to go so much. It's my, it would be the one country if I could go anywhere, I would go there. Yeah, we would love to host you when you come here because like it would be so amazing. <laughs> I would love to come. I sort of, you know, because I make films, I often get invited to yeah. film festivals. So I, I kind of always just wait to be invited somewhere. So have you seen any Indian films? I have, you know, I've seen, you know, a lot of Shah Yujid Ray. And then I saw a lot of uh, Guru Dut. Is that? Uh, Guru, Guru, Dutt. Guru, Guru Dutt. Dutt. You know, I know Mira Nair, Salam yeah. Bombay. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. love that. Um, I loved Monsoon Wedding. Do you know that film? Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. But I don't know Indian cinema very well. I, 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 would, I would like to. I know it's very vast. So what is uh, your opinion on self-help books? I like them too. I, I went through a phase where I, I read almost nothing but that. Um, you know, psychology self-help books, spirituality self-help books. Um, I haven't lately as much. A lot of them are not very good. <laughs> yeah. Or they're like too long. Um, but there's some great ones. I mean, I've I've been really helped by so many. Any self-help yeah. books that you would want to recommend us? So we are very, very keen on that. A Course in Miracles. Do you know that okay. book? I've uh, heard of this one. It's amazing. I, I, I guess it's a self-help book. Uh, it has 365 exercises you're supposed to do each day for a year. And it's supposed to like change your way of thinking uh, to a better, a better way. <laughs> um, and I actually have a podcast about it that's coming out. I mean, it's definitely the book that's, changed me more than any other book I've ever read. Um, So I I can't recommend that highly enough. That's like my favorite book in terms of having an impact on my life. So are there any books that you would like to recommend recommend us uh, that are based on emotional intelligence? Well, there's that famous one called Emotional Intelligence, right? 
<laughs> There's a book called A Course of Love, which is kind of a sequel to A Course in Miracles, which is kind of also about that, which I recommend highly as well. But yeah, I haven't read the much of the literature on emotional intelligence. I think it's really important. Yeah. Like, I think my emotional intelligence isn't as high as I would like it to be. Um, and I would like to get better in that department. Um, so, so yeah, I think it's really important. Are there any handles on Twitter or Instagram that you would like to talk about? These are something that people should follow if they're active on Instagram or Twitter. The filmmaker Michelle Gondry has a really good yeah. Instagram yeah. presence. And uh, I really like just like Instagrams are just like a painting a day or something. Um, there's all these Van Gogh paintings I've never seen before. I can't believe how many paintings that guy made. You, you would think you'd seen them all, but then there's always like a new one you've never seen before. Um, so I like this Van Gogh one uh, that does a different Van Gogh every day. And then there's this guy who does this Damien Kempf or something. He does like a kind of medieval paintings and they're just so interesting, like demons and stuff. I like that one a lot. And uh, is this any uh, lesser known filmmaker or an artist that a lot of people don't know about, but they should uh, definitely check out their work that you would like to recommend? One of my favorite filmmakers of like sort of in my, you know, basic level or age range or whatever um, is a, a, an American filmmaker named Rick Alverson. He made a film called The Comedy. That's quite amazing. And then a film called Entertainment. That's amazing. Yeah. And then a film recently called The Mountain, which is also amazing. And then this other filmmaker, Shane Carruth. I love him. Primer and Upstream Color. Upstream Color, yeah. Those two leap to mind. But yeah, there's so many great filmmakers yeah. and a lot of them are obscure. Are there any fictional books that you think everyone should pick up? I'll just tell you some of my favorite books um, if you want, but I, I don't know <laughs> if I would proselytize about it. Um, I mean, I love... Madame Bovary by Flaubert. I love Proust. I love James Joyce's Ulysses. I love Wuthering Heights. I love this modern book called uh, Endless Love by Scott Saunders. It was made into a film twice, very bad, very bad films, but it's an incredible book. I love The House of Mirth by Edith Wharton. I love Flannery O'Connor. I love everything she, she wrote. Are there any adaptations that you really, really think are well-made? Like the a good books. adaptation of a, of a book? Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Or course. like the film is better than the book? Or maybe it did, did justice to the writing of the in the book. Oh, um, that's a great question. Hard to think of a movie that did justice to the writing of a book, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jesus. Well, you know, what's an interesting film adaptation of a book? Uh, two, actually, are Vim Vendors' film... The Goalie's Anxiety at the Penalty Kick. The book is amazing by Peter Hanke. Okay. And it's so interesting. And then the movie is such an interesting way of adapting it. It's almost like sentence by sentence. He just like filled every sentence in this yeah. weird way. Uh, and then Peter Hanke made a film where he adapted one of his own books called The Left-Handed Woman. That's also a really interesting like a uh, book to film adaptation. Of course, um, the movie Adaptation is a yeah. brilliant adaptation of The Orchid Thief. Are there any questions that you think we should have, uh, we probably missed out on? Oh, well, poetry. We haven't talked about poetry. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. Let's talk about yes. that, Leah. Yeah. Uh, well, my favorite poet is probably Wallace Stevens. I love him. Um, if I was stranded on a desert island with one book, I probably would be the collected poems of Wallace Stevens. I think that would keep me going. And uh, John Ashbery, the poet John Ashbery. There's a podcast about him story coming up. We haven't released it yet, but um, I'm a big fan of his. And Rambo, the French poet, Rambo, I love very much. Yeah. And then Rumi, I love Rumi as well. So like we did not take music recommendations. Yeah. We talked about everything. So like, oh, please yeah, yeah, tell yeah. us about your favorite music. My favorite music is probably uh, Frank Black okay. from the Pixies. I love the Pixies. <laughs> I love him. I, I think he's my favorite artist, really. I love the Smiths. I love the Talking Heads. I love David Bowie. Uh, you know, really famous stuff. And so, uh, like we talked about movies, music, and books. Uh, let's also just for a second talk about TV shows because you have also mm -hmm. made a show of your own. So, which are the TV shows that you like? If you would have any recommendations, the thing that I probably like the most, and again, it's quite famous uh, here at least, is Nathan for You. I really love that show. <laughs> Scorsese just did this show about uh, Fran Lebowitz. 
I started watching that recently. I really liked it. I really like her a lot. What is that one book that you gift the most to people? A Course in Miracles. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I didn't mention this, but um, the French writer Maurice Blanchot, um, I think I've given his book, Thomas the Obscure, to a lot of people. Most of them haven't liked it. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but I love that book so much. A book called Death Sentence and a short story called uh, The Madness of the Day are three of my favorite things of all time. Have you also read any uh, Indian authors? I read Salman Rushdie. Does he count? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I read his book actually about, um, about the fatwa because I was sort of threatened with a fatwa at the time. And I was just curious to know what it was like uh, to be threatened with a fatwa. That was fascinating, but I didn't like it that much. Like there was a lot of ego in it or something, you know? Kabir is Indian, right? Yeah. Yes. I've read Kabir, but I don't think I've, I don't think I think of anything else that I've read that's from India. One last question, sir, that I have for you. Are you into audiobooks or is there any audiobook that you enjoyed recently? I am into audiobooks. Um, I listen to them a lot. Um, right now I'm listening to Ulysses by James Joyce on audiobook. And it's kind of like the uh, authorized version. So his grandson is very uptight about uh, who gets to do what with the uh, with the book. And he basically allowed them to do this recording, but they had to like jump through all these hoops. And it's like all these scholars had to weigh in on every single line, like how to interpret it and how to say it. So it's kind of like this very uh, hardcore version. I recently listened to the David Lynch autobiography. Somebody wrote the book and then he would take each chapter, he'd comment on it. But it seems yeah. like he just is talking, he's not writing it. Um, so there's a whole chapter that he sort of like riffs on what he just, what he just read that we just read. And it's really odd. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, they just are talking about weird things. Uh, that one's pretty interesting. Do you guys know Sam Shea, the work of Sam Shea? He did these uh, year-long performance pieces in the 70s, I guess. Okay. Um, and he did the first piece, he just locked himself in a cage for a year. And he had no, nothing to write with, no books. And people would bring food to him. And you could come and you come watch him in his cage, but he couldn't leave the cage for a year. It was kind of like, you know, being in jail, <laughs> um, except worse. And then he did a, a piece for a year where he had to punch into a time clock every hour, every day for a year. So he could never go more than an hour away from the time clock and he could never get a whole more than an hour of sleep. So... And, and he shaved his head at the beginning of the year. And every time he punched in, there was a camera on the thing. So it would make take one frame. So there's a six minute film of him punching uh, and his hair just growing for uh, for a year. Um, and then he did a, a piece for a year where he just tried to be outside for a year, not go indoors at all. And he got arrested after like seven months for defecating uh, in public. Um, this was New York City. <laughs> and he was you know, taken to jail and you know, he was crying because they were ruining his peace. Um, and then this woman um, whose name I think was Linda Montana, offered to do a piece with him where they tied themselves to a, to a six foot rope for a year. Uh, so they could never be apart for a whole year. They had to go to the bathroom together. They had to go to a movie together. They had to, you know, they're always together for a year. And um, he said that was by far the hardest piece he ever did, just being with somebody else for a year all the time. Um, and then he basically stopped doing performance pieces after that. But those four pieces I think are really incredible. I recommend his work very highly. <laughs> yeah, this is this is so nice, sir. Thank you for all your recommendations, sir. And like we we are such a big fan of the work yeah. you have been doing, and we have also been watching your show, uh, a show about the show. So we are very very happy that you could do this with us. And uh, uh, just like a, a small request from our end, like before leaving, can you just ask all our subs all our viewers to subscribe to our channel, Chal Chitra Talks? If you like this video, I would urge you to subscribe to the channel Charles Chitra Talks.